Hello everybody, this is Monte Cristo, and I'm coming to you with hopefully will be a new series on Overwatch about strategy and team composition and positioning and all that good stuff on a point-by-point -point basis on the maps. A lot of you have been asking me to sort of break down strategy for you from Overwatch, new viewers to the game, people who are struggling with watching it, which of course is partially due to the very bare-bones spectator client that we have currently, and the fact that we don't have replays, both of which are frustrating and it will be, you know, we're going to have to take some things with a grain of salt or admit there will be some mysteries as we go over this replay from Apex about what exactly happened that we hopefully will be able to clear up once replays are released in the future. But for now, uh, for those of you who are interested in getting a better grasp on Overwatch, fortunately it's a game that really does make it easy to make these shorter YouTube videos to discuss maybe a particular strategy on a particular point. And for today, what we're going to look at is NVS, the reigning Apex champions here in Korea, in their first match of Apex here in Season 2 against MVP Infinity. And it was a five-game series, but we're only going to take a look today at a single point, which is their point A Gibraltar defense. Now, Envy, most would say the best team in the world, certainly I would uh, at the present time, uh, but also particularly good if not the best team in the world, at Watchpoint Gibraltar, the map. And part of that is due to the team composition and how effective their positioning and how fast they react to different styles of attack. Now, fortunately, on this full hold we're going to see from Envy, we do actually get to see a variety of strategies used by MVP Infinity and how well Envious is going to react to the changes from their opponent in terms of positioning. Now, this isn't going to cover everything. Obviously, there's going to be a lot going on, as there constantly is in Overwatch. But for those of you who are trying to uh, wade into Overwatch or get a deeper understanding of the professional level of the game, I really hope this helps you uh, learn how to watch and have a better appreciation for what the teams are doing, because it is very tactical, and it a lot of people like to dismiss it as chaos, but in fact it is uh, very well organized and communicated and practiced by the teams on these maps and on these points. And as the game gets, gets further depth, gets more figured out, as the professional scene continues, we're going to see more explicit strategies to take a look out for. So with that said, let us actually get into this replay. So we're going to be starting and stopping a lot, of course, and uh, we're going to start with the exit here from MVP Infinity and take a look at something that we pretty consistently see, which is when you have a Roadhog player on defense on point A. Now, most teams will not defend until they go underneath what we call car wash here, and the payload gets closer to the first point because it's very difficult in this big open space with so many flank routes to defend well. But sometimes you go for a lucky play in this hallway where you already control the high ground, especially if you have a Roadhog. In this case, Undyne wall rides over to this catwalk, gets shot with a sleep dart, and is going to get hooked in. So, you know, you basically see if this works if you're on defense, and if you can get this lucky pick, you're in very good shape. You'll notice Envy's discipline, which is that they leave him sleeping as long as possible. They're trying to buy time here in order to make sure that they grind as much off the clock as possible. We've already lost 14 seconds before they even kill him, and they're going to get about 15 more uh, because of the respawn timer and the time it takes to run back. So already, uh, if you can get that, you're feeling really good about yourself. Uh, MVP Infinity not being careful about the potential Roadhog hook right there. So that's less. A, that's just a little trick that you have to be careful of and less of a note. You'll see Envious fall back, and then we're really going to get into the meat and potatoes of this defense from Envy. So now is the time that we're going to see if we can actually see Chips, who's also on this high ground. I guess we will not be so lucky. So we're just going to take a look at it and talk about team compositions. So... At this point, Envy knows what MVP Infinity had. Uh, they actually saw uh, the team composition come in. So Envy's defense, though, maintains basically the same team composition. And what's interesting is they're going to run single support. Now, this was on the last patch, it should be noted. But this team composition, I think, will work just fine on the current patch as well. Now, what's unique about Envious as a team is they can run these single support compositions because their Lucio player, Internet Hulk, formerly was their Winston main primary Winston player. So what Winston gives on Watchpoint Gibraltar is so much mobility to this team composition. And before we go any further, we should probably talk about common attack routes on point A. So typically what you're going to see is there are three main 
routes for attack. One of them is coming up car wash, which is generally considered quite dangerous because it's a narrow choke, and also because if there is an enemy diva or something right here shooting down on top of you because of hitboxes, the diva will get a bunch of headshots, also easy to plug up with the Reinhardt shield, and also the Soldier 76 is wonderful in this point because he's got great mid-range damage and basically just a giant open field he can spam into this choke point right here, making it very difficult. So sometimes you see tanky team compositions try and just shove the payload through up through car wash, but typically not. Now, there's also server. There's a doorway here with a bunch of servers, and teams will come up, go through this doorway for on the high ground, and go all the way around and come up server with their Reinhardt shield blocking right here, coming into the point. So that can be a little bit more effective. Um, usually you don't have to deal with as big of a choke point. Plus you don't have to worry about uh, people shooting down from above on top of you. So there's not that many flank routes unless somebody comes in from this side using this catwalk right here to go all the way around. Now the other one is you just come up into the top and you drop down, right? So you can clear out this area first, make sure you're not going to get flanked from behind. And that pretty much causes that, clears that up. Or you can come from up top here. So in general, hopping on the boxes, coming up and dropping down to sort of open up the fight and take the pay payload. Typically, you will not see people come through this door because it's so easily spammed out by a soldier and an Ana on, on, on the high ground. And sometimes you will see a flanker go through this door all the way up this staircase, up and around here to try and dislodge the soldier. High ground routes, if you're not dropping down, typically you might see, for example, a Winston or a Genji uh, come in and try and jump onto the soldier in the Ana, which you'll frequently find on the high ground here. So what is so special about Envy's defense? It basically accounts for all possible situations that you could see on Watchpoint Gibraltar for a variety of compositions. Mobility is really king in this space because it's very easy for Winston to jump, say, from here over to protect the soldier on this platform or for D.Va to boost over here as well. Um, and what we're going to see is Internet Hulk and Mickey particularly utilizing that mobility. In addition, generally speaking, Winston is going to be strong against some of these dive compositions, particularly those that feature Genji, because he it cannot be reflected. And we're also going to see Roadhog and Soldier. Now, Roadhog and Soldier, obviously, again, the medium range damage, you can really um, maximize Soldier's DPS at this range and this medium range. And with Taimu on the Roadhog, the hook is basically going to be able to cover the vast majority of this point, no matter where he is. Plus, he could always have a chance to walk either through server up onto the high ground or back up through the blast doors into the hangar onto the high ground to help protect as well, which is what we're going to see him do. Now, Soldier and Ana work very well together because, of course, if there's a crisis, if they're both on the high ground here, and the Ana can drop the biotic grenade, the Soldier can drop the biotic field, and they can help to cover each other. Furthermore, you don't really need a Genji because the speed boost isn't as useful when you have the Diva and the Winston just to jump to the point or jump to the defense of the Soldier 76 or into a choke point such as down here. And that makes a big difference too. So when you also have the Roadhog and the Soldier together to heal themselves or the Soldier to provide an off heal for another member on the high ground, you're not necessarily needing a secondary support because you have another off healer and Soldier can sort of function as a support in a pinch if necessary. So that's kind of the philosophy here and we're going to see how they use this mobility as the fight goes on. Now if we switch our attention to the other side, Initially, MVP Infinity is looking like they're going to use a dive composition and try and control the high ground. They want to jump from here over on top of the Soldier and the Ana, kill them, and then clean up the fight on the low ground with the Diva and the Genji and the Winston. However, you'll notice that they're going to be pretty much perpetually at a disadvantage because from NVS's perspective, if these three heroes come onto the high ground, they can immediately answer because Envy will already have the Ana and the Soldier up here, plus Winston and Diva will be able to get up here nearly immediately while Coco on the Reinhardt holds the low ground. So that's kind of long-winded, but we're going to actually see this in action right now and discuss how this changes. So if you guys didn't catch all that, we'll just break it down a little bit more as the clip unfolds. So... Let's take a look at where Taimu is going to be to start off on the high ground, just looking for the picks, making it as hard as possible for MVP Infinity to come in on this high ground right now, and Coco just simply standing there, 
and blocking the progress of the payload and forcing them to commit to a fight MVP before they can actually proceed further. Now, I agree with this switch instantaneously. One fact is going to go back because there's nothing really for the McCree to do here. Who is the McCree going to shoot? Too many line of sight blockers between the Reinhardt shield and the Winston shield, and they're going to go for an even more committed dive composition to try and knock down the high ground. So you see Winston creeping up right here. They're trying to get the drop in. Now they're going to see one fact head over and try and get this flank onto the high ground by looping around, and we'll see what the response is going to be. Now, ideally, what would happen right here is that we would see the Tracer, the Genji, the Diva, and the Winston all going in at the same time. But we'll notice how exactly uh, Envy responded to this, because they instead, Taimu, you can see, is already on the high ground here with the Roadhog, they have Harry Hook and Chips Hine on the Soldier and the Anna on the high ground already. So it's already basically, you know, a, a three versus two effectively on the high ground with the Tracer going over. Easy Bro on the Genji's not up there. And Brick just died because he went in too early. So part of this is MVP's failure to collapse simultaneously. But also part of it is simply Envy being able to adapt and constantly have a numbers advantage onto the high ground. You'll see Internet Hulk is also going to be up here at the same time. He already dropped that shield. So because the flank was slow and because Envy reacted faster, but even in the situation of a perfect flank where they have four people up on that high ground, still very difficult to get through all of the heals, sleep darts, uh, Winston shields, etc. that are going to be happening on that high ground. So time is going to kill Breck. Mickey is going to get one fact right here. And the, because the, the initial flank was not perfect, and it's much harder to try and go for this flank on attack because you're trying to coordinate between three different groups of people, basically. Your Diva and your Winston that are jumping up there, your Genji that's going to be following up, and then also your Tracer trying to go the long route up onto that high ground. Meanwhile, Envy, all they have to do is jump up there with the Diva and the Winston and concentrate their power on top of that point. They don't have to worry about multiple angles of attack hitting simultaneously. So pretty easily defended right there, but also showing off how reactive and quick this composition can be from Envy. So they basically have to go back immediately. Coco's going to get that cleanup kill, and they are going to reset now. So we're going to see a, a compositional change come in here from MVP Infinity, I believe, at this stage as they take a different approach. So Breck is going to go over onto the Reinhardt, and they basically abandon the dive, easy bro on the Roadhog, one fact on the Soldier. So at this point in time, they're going to play triple tank, and they're going to try and break through in a little bit more traditional fashion. They say, okay, we actually can't execute this dive uh, at the same speed that Envy is going to be able to counter it, so we're just going to walk in together all at once and try and, again, take control of this high ground, spam out. But as you can see, very easy for the defense to fall behind the crate and then fall into the doorway. Also, if you congregate on this high ground, you leave yourself open to an enemy on a biotic grenade, which is exactly what we're going to see right here. And unfortunately, a uh, bit of a mistake as we see this coming in because they want to drop down and they have a diva up here at the same time, but they get sort of knocked off the top here as we see Internet Hulk come in with the biotic grenade, which means they lose their shield and open themselves up to Harry Hook shooting at them from across the way. So... I mean, when you use a little bit of that CC to push people off that high ground, you can see it's just another very well executed attack by Envy, where they have a plan about how to knock out the Reinhardt shield and get rid of the D.Va uh, defensive matrix so they can get the damage in from the Soldier 76. They're also going to split spawn the D.Va right there, making sure that MVP Infinity will not have a six-man attack for as long as possible. So, what you'll notice now is that the positioning has changed. Before, we saw, of course, Internet Hulk over here. He could still jump back. His positioning is not as necessary because he can move so quickly. But Taimu, remember, was up on the top when the dive composition. He was standing up here, making sure that they could protect Harry Hook and Chips Hyen. Now that the composition has changed and they have a Reinhardt, you'll notice that, they, that now Taimu's on the low ground, standing behind the Reinhardt shield. And the purpose for this is that he and Mickey on the D.Va are going to be spamming the enemy Reinhardt shield should they drop down onto the payload, and also because these players are not under threat anymore. The, the 
basically the allocation of heroes has changed where before MVP Infinity was going to get four people up here onto the high ground and that defense had to be considered. But now, because the D.Va is the only hero from MVP Infinity that can get onto the high ground, Chips and Harry Hook are going to be just fine by themselves. D.Va cannot attack a soldier, even by herself, pre-nerf. If he has the biotic field up, the soldier will win that duel every time, basically, unless there's a terrible error that's made by the soldier player. The D.Va sort of has to go up, get the biotic field out of him, go back down, and then come back up when the biotic field is on cooldown if, if the D.Va wants to win that duel. Now, you can't even do that anymore, I don't believe. I think the soldier just wins every time since the changes to her health pool and armor. So, still going to be a viable defense, as stated earlier. So let's get back into this, and we'll see how the changes to this triple tank composition really help. So instead of coming up on the top side, now they're just going to go through Car Wash. This is the most straightforward attack you can have, but also relies very heavily on the Reinhardt shield. And the spam game is difficult to win, considering that they can shoot you with a Soldier 76. Of course, we could say MVP Infinity can do the same thing, and both Reinhardts are hiding behind the payload. But the onus is on MVP Infinity to move it. Envy is perfectly happy standing in this configuration all day, because it just buys them more and more time. So we're going to see Chips High and actually get the kill on Debrek right there. And this is going to be a mistake from MVP Infinity, which we'll see right here. Uh, Breck, his shield was getting low, and they decided to charge him in. They intended to nano boost him. Unfortunately, they're going to hit the Lucio, so you get a boost EO instead. But you'll notice that when the charge came in, the Ana instantly kills the Reinhardt with the help of the Soldier 76. You'll notice the D.Va is up on the high ground right now. They were trying to cut off some of that damage on their engage. But Internet Hulk responds by jumping down, putting the shield, and causing interference. So even in a perfect world where MVP is going to be able to get that Reinhardt in there, they're not going to be able to follow up with the rest of their team due to the Winston bubble sitting right here and Winston just running back and forth and trying to electrocute everybody with the Tesla cannon and basically breaking up the enemy formation. At that point, Envy would be able to either use a nano boost on, on Coco to deal with that Reinhardt, use a sleep dart, whatever you need, and you also can deal with the D.Va up here. So basically, you divide and conquer their team, use your six members to take out their two, their D.Va, and in this case, uh, or what should have been their Reinhardt without the mistake, and you're still going to be able to defend this point. So you can see how well rehearsed this is and how everybody on Envious knows exactly exactly what to do and which targets to select and where to reposition in order to maximize that game e gain even if MVP Infinity had not made the mistake of nano boosting the Lucio. You'll also notice that Envy is incredibly disciplined when it comes to their ult management. They didn't panic right there when the charge came in. In fact, they just sit there and they're going to have six ults because they have been so good on this defense that they haven't had to commit basically anything. And that's going to come into play on the last push as we see why not just take absolutely forever to die and really just get another 15 seconds on the clock right there at least as he's going to respawn. Now, MVP Infinity can't really change their roster at this point, their team composition. They really need to get these ultimates to make this final push if anything's going to work at all. And we're going to see this final attack right here. I'm going to go back onto the high ground and try and spam down this Reinhardt shield, jump down onto the payload. This time, though, you're going to see a little bit of a different approach. So the soldier's going to come around the side through server and try and get up onto the uh, get onto the point, that is, while the D.Va distracts the Soldier 76. You'll see the biotic field come down. Just eating a lot of the damage right now, buying time for the enemy soldier, or the, in fact, MVP soldier to get it. You'll see her lose the duel and have to use that self-destruct. That's typically what happens if you don't leave, or on the last patch, didn't leave when that biotic field was down. But the work was done, right? So we're going to see Harry Hook drop onto the low ground. One fact is going to come through server and surprise him during his tack visor. So that's going to be a very crucial ultimate that was not used to the maximum effect. We see somehow right here, Taimu did actually get killed by Easy Bro and the enemy Roadhog. So things are looking good for MVP. And Internet Hulk also just going to be some buying some time with the Primal Rage. So they do actually manage to clean up several members of Envy, but the problem here is there are just too many ults from Envy to make anything work. But finally, the strategy and their engage actually operated properly, but it's sort of a day late and a dollar short at this point. And you can see how frustrating it was for MVP to even break, try and break into this point in the first place and how many different strategies they had to use against Envy just to find the crack in the armor, as it were, and it's just not enough in the end. 
So I hope this guy this helped explain things to you guys a little bit more clearly about why Envy is so effective with this particular composition on this point. Uh, now, Envy is special in the way that they can run this composition because they have the right mixture of players and hero specialties to actually get away with it. You do notice Internet Hulk change over to Lucio at the end because he had already used his ultimate, and they're trying to just get, you know, stall out the point, get a little more healing there because their spawns are closer, and it's going to be easier to win that fight if they can consistently heal up and maintain a man advantage. So I like this. Also get back to the point faster with the responding members of his team with the speed boost. So it does make a lot of sense. But I hope you guys take a look at this and you can see a little bit more clearly as to how this highly mobile composition functions on defense on Gibraltar A and why it's so difficult, uh, even if you're going to try and run a dive composition, if you're going to try and run a triple tank and, and soldier composition, how fast Envy reacts to this tactically and how they know exactly where to go and exactly what to do against a variety of team compositions to help defend on this map and on this particular point. It's uh, part of the Envy specialty, part of the reason why we do think of them as one of, if not the top team in the world right now, is that their communication is so excellent, alt economy very good, and they have these unique strategies that are difficult for opponents to practice against because only they will run them, and especially only they will run them this efficiently. So, hope to be doing more of these in the future, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave me some feedback. Maybe I'll even get a video editor someday. Crazy thought right there. But anyway, thanks a lot. This has been Monte Cristo, and I hope to see you guys soon.